This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Focus is not a gift. Focus is not a gift. If you're going to do something great with your life, you have to develop, you have to cultivate the focus. And focus is not a gift. For anything great to be possible, there has to be focus. For anything great to be possible, there has to be focus. And cultivating focus begins with understanding your vision. For me to be a focused person, there has to be something I have to focus on. There has to be something I have to focus my energy on. And God is calling us to a life of focus. When Jesus shared in Matthew Gospel chapter 6, verse 33, he says, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. It is the call to focus. He gave us the priority, the order of things. If I'm going to achieve my dream, if I'm going to achieve my vision, one of the key things I need to develop is called focus. And focus is not a gift, and it takes wisdom and discipline to cultivate focus. It takes wisdom and discipline to cultivate focus. There are things that God has spoken to you concerning your life, concerning your business, concerning your career, it takes focus to see manifestation. Sometimes God will tell you, this is what I want to do in your life. This is what I'm going to do with you. But it takes focus to see those things come to pass. So focus has to be cultivated if we're going to be more effective, more productive, and more successful. In Genesis when we look at the life of Joseph, he had a dream. Read from Genesis 37, Genesis 39. Joseph had a dream. And that dream was from God. And God revealed to Joseph the things he was going to do in his life. And one of the key things that Joseph is expected to cultivate or develop is the focus to pursue the dreams. Instability can limit the possibility of a vision. If I'm unstable, I won't get to my destination. Instability can stop the manifestation of a great vision. And when a person is not stable, they can't get to their destination. And stability is the key to doing the impossible. Whether it's in business, it's in relationship, it's in anything we're called to do, focus and stability is important. There is mental stability. There is emotional stability. There is spiritual stability. And because focus is not a gift, a lot of people have an issue when it comes to focus. They could start something. They are very zealous. They are very passionate. But when they begin to face resistance, when they begin to face opposition, when they begin to face crisis, you notice they begin to withdraw from the pursuit of that vision. If God is going to do anything in our lives, we'll have to choose the path of focus. If God is going to do anything in our lives, if God gives you a promise, if God gives you a vision, it doesn't matter how beautiful the promise is, you have to stay focused to achieve manifestation. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is. It doesn't matter how it looks. You have to stay focused. And focus is an intentional decision. Focus is an intentional decision. 
I need to stay focused to achieve my goals, my dreams, the things that God has called me to do. Focus is an intentional decision. And this is where a lot of people cannot get to their place of destiny. They couldn't get to their place where they will experience more of the things that God told them because they started losing focus along the way. You know, the Bible said, we should follow those who through faith and patience. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. In Hebrews 6, verse 12. And look at what he said here. Hebrews 6, verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, that yet be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That we should not be slothful, but we should be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Faith and patience is strategic in manifesting the will of God for your life. God can have a beautiful vision for you. God can have a great dream for you. But faith and patience will make it a reality. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How does faith come? It comes by hearing God's word. Doesn't matter what I'm facing, doesn't matter what I'm dealing with, God's word contains the capacity of God. It contains the capacity of God that can change any situation. So when I'm listening to God's word, faith begins to rise in my heart. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. In good times, in seasons that doesn't look favorable, it takes the knowledge of God's word to overcome adversity, to overcome crisis, to overcome challenges and to overcome trials. Faith comes by hearing. And patience is one of the fruits of the recreated human spirit. And faith and patience work together. Your faith may be reaching out for something and you have not seen manifestation. It takes patience to expect manifestation. Your faith may be reaching out for a house, for a car, for a soul, or for something. Whatever it is your faith is reaching out for, it takes patience to receive the harvest. If I'm in faith and I don't consider the principle of patience, I'm going to miss it. This is why a lot of people could be making confection, but when they see delay, when they see things not working according to the expectation, they become hopeless. It takes patience to retain your hope. It takes patience to retain your hope. It takes patience to know that all things work together for good. It doesn't matter what I'm dealing with. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what the situation is right now. All things work together for good. This situation is working for my good. And that is why it's important for me to understand that focus doesn't just happen. People choose to be focused. Why do we need to be focused? There are distractions. Mental distractions, emotional distractions, financial distraction, job distraction, relation. There are all kinds of distraction that comes our way. We need to be focused to overcome distractions. We need to be focused to overcome distraction. No matter the distraction that may be coming your way, you need to stay focused to see the manifestation of the promises of God. We need to stay focused. And how do you stay focused? Number one, faith in God's ability. I need to have faith in the ability of God. That is number one. Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, to do abundantly above what I think or what I ask, according to his power that walketh in me. The power of God is at work in me. So if I'm going to be a focused person, my faith must be in the ability of God. If my faith is not in the ability of God, situations will produce distraction. But faith in the ability of God strengthens focus. Faith in the ability of God will strengthen your focus. There is a strength that comes from knowing that God is able to exceed your expectation. There is a strength that comes from knowing the ability of God, knowing 
know what God can do and what God is willing to do. Faith in the ability of God empowers you to achieve and come on with us. Faith in the ability of God, no matter what you're going through. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8. So God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You know, when you know that all grace will be, will be abound, abounding towards you, no matter the reports you have had, you will stay with the report of God's word. It is by faith will stay with the report of God's word. It is by faith we stay with the report of God's word. So if I'm going to be a focused person, I need to have faith in the ability of God. Number two, if I'm going to be a, 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 a focused person, if I'm going to be a focused person, I need to focus my energy knowing about the goodness of God. Why do I talk about knowing about the goodness of God? Mm -hmm. you know, those who easily give up hope because they felt that God is not coming true, this is not going to happen. But if you focus on the goodness of God, it will energize your faith. It will energize your faith. Nothing energizes your faith like the knowledge of God's goodness. Nothing energizes your faith. Like the knowledge of the goodness of God. Nothing will energize your faith like the knowledge of God's goodness. God is a good God. I need to remind myself that. No matter where I found myself, no matter what the situation is, I need to have this mentality, God is a good God. And the knowledge of God's goodness has the potential to transform how you look at situation. The knowledge of God's goodness has the potential to transform how you look at situation. There are those who look at situation from a perspective of, Defeat, frustration, inability to trust God. No, but the knowledge of God's goodness will stir up your faith for uncommon results. God is a good God. When you look at your life, no matter what you're dealing with, God is a good God. This is the kind of knowledge you should project. This is the kind of mindset you should project. God is a good God. The job didn't work out according to our expectation, but God is a good God. The business didn't come through according to our expectation, but God is a good God. The knowledge of God's goodness will help you to secure your focus until there is a manifestation of that which God has spoken to you. I need to focus my energy on the goodness of God. If you focus your energy on your limitation, on your struggle, on your mistakes, on your inability, it's going to frustrate your focus. It's going to frustrate your focus. You know, when God was delivering Lot and his family from Sodom, one of the key instructions is that nobody should look back. That's one of the key instructions. And looking back, means there is something to look at. So when God said, go forward, he wasn't expecting them to look backward. And sometimes don't let the voice of the past distract you from reaching your full potential, from connecting with your future. Don't let the voice of the past. There are people who allow the voice of the past, what has happened to them in the past, what they went through in the past, the abuse, the humiliation, and that begins to affect their mental stability. Your past is not your future. Your future is connected to your present, and what you say, what you do right now is what will create your future. Your future is not in your past. Your past can never be your future. So for you to be a person who is going to be focused, don't let your past mistakes, don't let your past challenges, don't allow what has happened in the past to break your focus. The enemy has a way of trying to make you believe that you're not making progress. If you're breathing, you're making progress. If you have a roof over your head by rent or by bought, you're making progress. If you can put food on your table, you're making progress. Why did I say this? A lot of people in the course of the pursuit of the next thing become frustrated if it's not happening instead of focusing on how far God has brought them. You can't be a focused person when you complain about everything. 
You can't be a focused person when you worry about everything. The scripture says, cast your cares upon the Lord. You know, 1 Peter 5, verse 7, you say, cast your cares, your cares about your marriage, your children, your future, your job, your calling, your business, whatever, your mortgage, your debt. You say, cast the cares on God. What happens when we cast our cares on God? It revives the hope for expectation. It revives the hope for possibilities. It revives the hope for uncommon results. When I begin to look at the goodness of God, God, you're, you're a good God. I judge you faithful, God. Whether in good times and in challenging times, whether in good times or in trying times, in times and seasons, when it doesn't make sense, stay in focus is a decision. There are many things that will come to break your focus. Emotional pain. Situations that are not consistent to God's intention. There are things that will come, try to break your focus. And can I say this to you this morning? Don't allow how you feel to stop you from what you believe. Don't allow how you feel to stop you from what you believe. If you believe that God is able to exceed your expectation, don't allow how you feel. Your feeling may tell you it's not possible, it's not going to work out, but the scripture said we'll walk by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Well, we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by anxiety. We don't walk by depression. We we'll walk by faith. And if you're living and walking by faith, you're going to have uncommon results to sustain your focus you need to focus on the promises of God. There are things God has told you that he's going to do. There are things the Spirit of God has revealed to you that he's going to do concerning your life. The promises of God is the vehicle that takes you to your destination. The promises of God is a vehicle that takes you to your destination if you apply faith to those promises. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, God was talking to the prophet. He said to Habakkuk, write the vision. He said the vision is for an appointed time. Although it tarry, but surely it will come to pass. He said, write the vision. Can I say this to you? Your vision has process. And it takes focus to go through the process that will lead to the expression of the vision. Don't make room for distraction. Don't allow the things happening around you to distract you from the big picture. Hebrews 12, verse 2. It said, looking unto Jesus. That is a call to focus. Wow. That is a call to focus. He said, looking. Because there are so many things trying to get our attention here. Our bills, situations, circumstances. Trying to get our attention. But looking unto Jesus empowers you to do the impossible. When you look unto him, nothing can stop you from rising. When you look unto him, nothing will stop you from being who God wants you to be. Looking unto Jesus, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how you feel. Let me say this to you. God will never give up on you, even on your worst day. God will never give up on you, even when you made the worst mistake. God will never give up on you, even when you miss the mark. God will never give up on you, no matter what you're dealing with right now. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. You need to have this knowledge that God cannot leave you and he cannot forsake you. So no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, have this mentality that God cannot forsake you. That God has a plan for your life and it takes focus to step into those plans. It takes focus to step into the plans that God has for your life. It, it takes focus to stay with the plans that God has for you. No matter what you're going through, God has a plan for me. I'm not going to worry about my future. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a powerful thing to focus on. He's the same yesterday. 
to them forever. I'm not going to worry about how am I going to pay this bill? How are we going to do this? He's the same yesterday. If he multiplied the loaves yesterday, he will multiply the resources. If he multiplied the loaves yesterday, if he turned water into wine, John Gospel chapter 2, if he turned water into wine, he can turn anything around. Focus on what God has spoken to you. God said to Habakkuk, although it tarry, but surely to come to pass. He said, although it tarry, but surely to come to pass. There are things that may have tarried, but it is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. There are things you may look at in, in Hebrews chapter, or let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews 10, 35. One of the scriptures that could help you build your focus is Hebrews 10, 35. In Hebrew 10, 35, it says, cast not the way dear for your confidence. Wow. Wow. So there are people that cast away their confidence. They look at their life. They look at themselves and say, nothing is going to work out for me. I, I don't see this working out for me. I don't see this happening for me. I don't see this uh, working out for me. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't see this working out for me. He said, cast not away dear for your confidence. That simply means you can cast away your confidence. It means don't cast away your hope. Don't give up on yourself. Don't quit on yourself. Cast not away your confidence. It says, which has a great recompense of the world. Don't cast away your confidence. There is something God has called you to do. There is something God has anointed you to do. Don't cast away your confidence. You have a confidence. You have a purpose. You have a plan. There is a destiny with your name on it. Don't cast away your confidence. Why? Confidence will accelerate your passion for consistency, for continuity, and advancing in the right direction. So don't cast away your confidence. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what is happening, don't throw away your confidence. Those things that God has spoken to you, Read them over and over. Begin to declare them. We need to go back to declaring the things God said about our lives. One of the ways you keep your focus is to keep your focus on the prophetic word. You go back to it. God told the children of Israel that when they were going to come out from the promised land, and he delayed. The Bible said that Daniel understood through books. You understood through prophetic word given to you. You go back to look at the things God has said. You begin to declare them. Faith comes by hearing, by reading what God has spoken to you. Focus is sustained by understanding. I said focus is sustained by understanding and by knowledge. It is by understanding and knowledge you sustain focus. That is how you sustain focus. By understanding. And by knowledge, you sustain focus. That no matter what I'm going through, the things God said concerning me will come to pass. No matter what it is, it may take some time, but I'm not going to give up on my faith. You see, your faith should be the tool to get this result. I'm not going to give up on myself. I'm not going to give up on my vision. No matter what the situation is, I'm going to trust God and his word. And can I say this to you? Living by faith, will require you to stay focused. Living by faith. There are many things God told me he would do in my life and ministry, and I'm just waiting for those things. Trusting God for that. Declaring that they will happen. Believing that they will happen. Do I face opposition? Yes. Do I meet situation that wants to make me feel discouraged? Yes. Do I meet situation that wants to make me get distracted? Yes. But focus is a determined factor required for the possibility of your vision. It's a determining factor required for the possibility of your vision. So when you have a vision, you need to stay focused when you feel it and when you don't feel it. Feeling has nothing to do with the pursuit of vision. I don't feel like pursuing it, get up and pursue it. I don't feel like believing what God told me, get up and believe it. This is how you make progress. This is how you make progress. This is how you succeed. This is how you exceed. This is how you excel. Living by faith opens up uncommon results. When you are living by faith, 
you will do great and mighty things. And focus is an intentional decision. Why should we stay focused? We need to stay focused as we can see the manifestation of the things God has promised us. We need to stay focused to come into the harvest that is will of God has revealed to us. And um, focus is a decision. Focus to finish well. Focus to get uncommon results. Don't allow your situation distract you from your mission. Don't. Don't allow what people say. You know, sometimes people could feel bad. This person said this about me. That person said that about me. The only too interested in what people are saying about you that is not right. The more interested in focusing on what will make your life make progress. That is energy in the right direction. That's how to do life. You don't do life from the voice of mockery, the voice of opinion. You do life from the voice of purpose. You focus your energy on the things that matter most to you. I'm here this morning to say to us, the things that God has told us about our lives, let's go back to focusing on them. If you stay focused, your hope will accelerate and your faith will come alive. If you stay focused on the instructions that God has given to you, if you stay focused on the instructions that God has given to you, you will produce results that will amaze you. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for everyone watching. We thank you for everyone partaking of this service. I pray that will, your focus will accelerate on that dimension. I decree that you become a focused person. Every force of distraction, I command it to cease. And I speak direction into your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that you will walk in supernatural miracles, signs and wonders. I decree that the visions and the prophetic word that God has given to you will come to pass in your lifetime. I decree that your businesses will grow, the works of your hands will flourish. I prophesy that you will see supernatural help that will take you far beyond the natural in the name of Jesus. May your needs be met. May your bills be paid. May you continue to rise and may you continue to win. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We're well, going to give our friends and tithes right now. Father, we will lift up our tithes and our offerings will come before you. You are the source of every good thing. God is able to make all grace abound towards us that we are always having all sufficiency. We'll give with an expectation and we'll receive increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. You can do your giving by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to encourage us to be here on Wednesday morning for prayer service, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for Thursday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also on Wednesday and, for, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, 5 a.m. Central Time. And I want to encourage us to be around. Also, for those watching on Facebook or whatever platform you're viewing this service from, you can get our books by going to Amazon.com. There is greatness in you. And for the things you need to know about your futures available on Amazon.com. And also, you can get how to run a global business from any location. It's also available on Amazon.com. I also want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. Partnership is one of the ways that will make progress. Partners are people that pray for this ministry and give at the Spirit of God will lead them. So you can partner also by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I pray for you that you're going to have a wonderful week and may you continue to flourish and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Until our next service, don't forget this. There's witness of you and Jesus is coming soon.